Joe here with the Idaho Prepper channel and for today's video I'm going to attempt to make a canvas hot tent using this 9 by 12 painting canvas painting tarp so uh, what you see here is all the supplies that I think I'm gonna need to complete this project um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you all of the materials that I picked up to put this tent together so obviously here I have my tent stove I guess you'd call it stainless steel I'll leave links in the description where you can pick all this stuff up I have the tent stove here and the stove pipe is all inside of this stove ready to go this here is the stove jack so this I'm going to be placing on the outside of my canvas tent it has velcro on the sides and this is where your stove jack is going to come through I'm going to cut a hole right here and that way when it gets really hot this material doesn't doesn't burn so I have the velcro here that I'm going to be mending onto this tarp I have grommets for for all my for all the corners of the tarp this here is the the grommet uh, tool that you push the tool the grommets together with and then these here are some hole punches to punch the holes in the tarp for the grommet. I have some salt here and some dye. And these are obviously working in conjunction with this tub of hot water because I'm going to be dyeing this tarp. Uh, the final step of this process, and I don't have it out here right now, is the waterproofing pro process. So I'm going to be experimenting with a couple different uh, products it's going to be waterproof and it's not going to be flammable so i'm going to go ahead and get this tarp unraveled and get this dye batch going all right so the dye i'm going to be using is this dye called dylon it's the olive green just like that and then the next thing they want you to do is put about eight tablespoons of salt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wing this and just basically put what seems like eight tablespoons. You know, you're gonna want a container big enough that your whatever you're dying can fit in and you wanna have enough water to make sure that the, your tarp or whatever you're dying has enough room to kind of freely just move around. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my dye to the bath here okay now that i have this all nicely mixed up i'm going to go ahead i've already unfurled my tarp here i'm going to just start placing this tarp inside of my bath here all right i'm back so i'm a little more prepared to do this so i'm going to go ahead and just start kind of working this tarp in here now now that i have my gloves but i can already see that this is drastically, a drastically different color. That's really nice. Okay, so now I have that really well saturated. I'm just going to go ahead and let that sit for uh, about a half hour. All right, so my tarp has been soaking in this dye for over 24 hours, which is um more way more time than it actually needs it but i'm gonna go ahead and drain this and then get it rinsed off and then hang it up to dry All right, so as you can see, I just have the tarp draped over this two by four here, which I have spanning from this ladder 
over to this structure right over here. I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll be back. All right, so we're back. I have my canvas all dried out. The dye didn't take as, as good as I thought it would. I probably needed more dye, but either way, it, it got it a little less white than it was, so I'm fine with it. But now I'm at the stage of this project where I'm going to start putting my eyelets in or my grommets in. And this was kind of something I've been brainstorming for a while. I was trying to find like a really easy way of doing this so that I, you know, and avoid like having to sew anything. So what I came up with is I found this really heavy duty canvas patch and it's like an adhesive that you iron on. So it's a hot adhesive. It's totally waterproof and you can wash it. So once you, you cut out your piece um, and iron it on, it's pretty, it's permanent. So I've already done one and it turned out great. It like exceeded my expectations. It looks awesome. So I'm just gonna kind of give you a, a, uh, a quick demonstration of how I'm doing this. So I'll leave links in the description of where you can find this product. Um, I just got it on Amazon. Uh, but basically what you wanna do, and I'm just kind of eyeballing these, these measurements here for the most part. So I'm gonna do this corner right now. So I'm gonna basically just lay out about that much patch, right? And I have a pen here to kind of create my markings. So about that's about where I want it, right there. It's about, I don't know, four inches of patch. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this pencil, I'm just gonna act as like a ruler. And I'm gonna basically just go ahead and scribe a line right there just to make the cut as straight as I can. I'm gonna be shaping it a little bit better once I get it on. I'm gonna take some heavy duty scissors and just cut right on my line, just like that. So now I have a patch. Now I'm gonna take it, I have it lined up on the corner here the best I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and scribe the line just like that. So there, I got my corner established. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, any, you know, you can do it square or whatever, but now I'm just gonna line that up just like that. Okay, so as you can see, I have my patch lined up with the corners. It's hanging over a little bit right here, but I'm gonna, you know, once I get this patch stuck on here, I'm gonna just come back and trim that up. So first thing you wanna do is just find any area of the patch and just start ironing it on. So the directions say that you wanna iron this at something like, it was something like, let's see, what is the temperature? 330 degrees Fahrenheit for a minute. What, and I don't there I don't have temperatures on here. It just on this iron, it just says linen, cotton, <laughs> and synthetic. So I have this iron set to the highest temp, which is linen. Uh, and I'm just kind of going over this until I feel like it's stuck. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this back side. Okay, so I have that where it's really well mended on there. Now I'm just gonna come back with my scissors and trim off this excess. And there you have it, just a perfect reinforced corner. So now, now I'm gonna show you how I put in these grommets. You can order all of this stuff online. Um, I ended up finding it at local stores. This, uh, these grommets I actually found at Walmart in their um, fabric section. 
uh, but the hole punches, you're gonna need a hole punch. And for these grommets here, they're 7 16 uh, extra large eyelets. And for that, I'm using a uh, 3 3 8 punch. These I bought at Harbor Freight. It was just a kit, it was kind of cheap. Um, so, but that's basically the size punch that I'm gonna be using. And then the other thing you're gonna need is the uh, eyelet tool that puts the that puts the uh, eyelets together. So I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. So I'm taking my hole punch and just finding kind of a good center point here. And then take my hammer. Punch that through. As you can see, it went all the way through. Now I'm gonna take my tool here. You want this, this side on the bottom, on the bottom like that. And then you take this part, goes through here like this. You wanna work it right through the hole, just like that. All right, now I'm gonna put this on here like that. And then we're gonna take this tool and putting it right there like that. So everything's gonna sandwich just like that. And then we're gonna take our hammer. You definitely gotta hit that a little harder than you think you would. As you can see, put my eyelid in there perfectly. And this is just like heavy duty, reinforced corner, like there's no way that's tearing. Uh, yeah, it turned out great, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go all the way around this tarp here, and I'm gonna basically put an eyelet on each corner, and then probably two um, in the middle of the long part, and then one in the middle of the short span, because this is a nine by 12, so. And then once that's all done, we'll move on to waterproofing this this canvas. Okay, so I'm at the phase of the project where I'm gonna go ahead and start waterproofing my canvas tarp. So I have a gallon of paint thinner and then a tube of 100% pure silicone. So I'm basically just going to be diluting the silicone into the paint thinner and then spraying it on with this HVLP gun. So um, these are actually pretty cheap. As long as you have like an air compressor, you can do this, you can apply the, the waterproof this way. So I watched a bunch of different videos on it with guys like struggling to get it on with a paintbrush or like a paint roller. I just thought that was just way too much work. So these are actually pretty cheap. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight for like under $20. So really cheap and they're easy to use. So that's what I'm using to apply my waterproofing. Uh, product. So I watched a bunch of different videos on how to waterproof canvas and essentially there's two methods to do it. You can either use your solvent to dilute wax or you can use your solvent to dilute um, silicone. So I'm going to go ahead and basically fill up a gallon of paint thinner here because I'm guessing it's probably good it's probably gonna take at least a gallon to saturate this tarp. All right, now I'm gonna take my silicone and I have no real idea as to how much silicone you're supposed to use. Let's say half a tube for now. We'll see what that does. I'm gonna take a, uh, my stir stick here and just start stirring this silicone and getting it diluted. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in my cup here. All right, I think we're ready to go.
Okay, I'm all done getting it sprayed, so I'm gonna let this hang out and dry all day and then uh, come back and then give it a quick test. All right, we're back and our canvas tarp has been drying for 24 hours since I did the silicone treatment. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some water on it and test it out, make sure that it actually sheds water. Oh yeah, that sheds water perfectly. Very nice. All right, so the final phase of this hot tent project is basically getting my tarp set up as is, uh, and then that way I can determine exactly where I'm gonna put my stove jack. So I'm out here uh, in the North Idaho woods, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my tarp set up, and I got my stove with me, and I gotta clear this land first. So got a lot of work ahead of me. Okay, so I think that's about as high as I want my tent to be, about right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down and then get it tied up on the ground. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get this tarp spread over the uh, tent frame here. Okay, so I have my canvas completely spread out over my tent frame here. So I'm going to go ahead and start making some stakes. That way I can stake the corners of my tarp. Okay, so now that I have the tent all set up, I'm going to go ahead and get my tent stove inside and figure out where I'm going to put the chimney. I don't want it too close to the tent and I don't want it too close to the ridge pole. So oh. I might kind of configure this kind of at an angle so that way I can feed it while I'm laying down at night and I can kind of feed it while I'm sitting up inside of here and it, 
you know, I don't have to get to the side to feed it. So I think the best situation here, the best way to situate this stove is just to kind of do it at an angle like this. Okay, so this is about right exactly where I'm going to put my stove jack. Okay, so I'm just going to basically do a, a rough kind of circle here for where I think the stove jack is going to go. Something just like that. Then I'm going to take the stove jack here and I'm going to trace the diameter of the stove pipe onto that and get it cut out. And just trace. A circle here. Just like that. Alright, so now I'm just going to fold it like that just like that that's about where we are right there I'm gonna just go ahead and outline this hole kind of like that oops that's okay and I'm gonna cut that out from right here and then I'm gonna take this and then put it on the outside and finish everything up from the outside all right so this is self-adhesive velcro we're gonna go ahead and all right, I'm gonna put, go ahead and place my Velcro right along my outside line. Just like that. And then take my scissors and just cut off the excess right on my line like that. Just like that. If I need to, I could probably just close this these ends in with some some more pine boughs and um, and. Uh, limbs but i think i'll be fine tonight it's not going to get too cold tonight but when i start camping in this during the winter months i'll definitely probably reconfigure this so that i can close the the ends of this tent probably wouldn't be too difficult just to get some more canvas and velcro some canvas on the ends here and then that way uh it'll be a full functioning tent all right, I'm gonna start getting my bed set up. All right, that is nice. Super comfy. I'll have no problem sleeping in here tonight. All right, well, it's definitely time to get some dinner going because I'm starving. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get our chicken chipotle started. So I'm not gonna be using that heater. I'll just save that heater for a different MRE, uh, but I definitely wanna go ahead and cook everything on the wood stove tonight for sure. So this is the chicken chunks here 
and the Santa Fe rice and beans. So I'm just, I think I just mix all this stuff together. I know these open this way, but just because I'm putting them out in this pot, it's easier just to open them this way. I'm going to go ahead and open up my chipotle tortilla and uh, get it on the stove and start heating it up. Got two of them in there. Okay, so I'm going to put my tortillas in the this pan here and then just put it underneath the stove to kind of heat them up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. That's good. Excellent. Check my tortillas. Wow, there's like smoking hot. That's a perfect place. Just put your, if you ever want to warm anything up, just put it in a pan and stick it underneath the stove. It heats it right up. Definitely doesn't need hot sauce, but I'm gonna put it on there anyways. Woo. Whoa, almost spilled my whole meal there. Wow, it's really good very spicy for sure hence spicy chicken taco I don't know if I'm just super hungry from building the shelter today but this is a really good MRE like I would eat this for dinner at home You might think I'm crazy, but I'm gonna go ahead and add this bottle of Tabasco to my meal. Let's try it out now. It didn't really change it much. All right, now we're gonna try our marble pound cake. what it looks like not too bad that's good a little fluffier than I thought it'd be it tastes like real cake it's pretty good All right, well, the temperatures are definitely dropping quickly, but uh, my wood stove is keeping me pretty warm in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and make myself some peppermint tea.
That's about ready. <sighs> really good. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get my sleeping bag and call it a night. Uh, it's starting to kind of get a little colder outside, but I'm I'm really I'm feeling pretty good in here. I don't know if it's just because I still have a lot of residual heat coming off the campfire here or the wood stove fire, um, or it's just the uh, belly full of hot peppermint tea. I'm not sure, but I'm not going to attempt to keep this wood stove going throughout the night. I'm just going to let it sizzle out right now and uh, it should be fine. It's not gonna get too cold tonight, probably high 30s is my guess, but I got a really good sleeping bag, so it should keep me plenty warm. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, get into my sleeping bag, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. All right, well, that wasn't too bad of a night. Uh, it didn't get too cold. I was really warm in the sleeping bag, so. I was fine. I ended up actually switching around so my head was facing uphill. Um, so that made a big difference. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of coyotes last night. They were just howling all night. But otherwise, yeah, it was fine. I did, uh, I did good in here. Uh, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to make some coffee. And then... Probably do a couple more little modifications on this tent. All right, you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, and just remember all the products in this video, I'll make sure to leave links for in the description. Um, so I think overall it was a good success. I, I, I learned some things. Uh, for the most part, it went according to plan and maybe a little better in some areas, but just gonna make a few more adjustments, probably reconfigure this tent the next time I set it up. Um, I'm gonna probably add a few, a uh, couple more uh, tie points for the tarp just for tying it down and opening up opening it up in the in the middle section uh, and then of course I'm going to stitch that stove jack onto the tarp itself but other than that you know it turned out great um, also I'm going to probably bring some better stakes next time than the ones I just uh, I ended up having to make out here in the field um, they worked out okay but it would have been better to have some some uh some more sufficient stakes but uh anyways if you haven't done so uh please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and until the next time stay prepared <laughs>